show you how to make the Easter chick bunting from Creative Kiwi. Before this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser, a selection of threads, two that have got matching bobbins, masking tape, my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size. There's a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well so please do take the time to have a look. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser so place them down over the outer frame and then we're going to pin around the top edge of our um, hoop so that the stabiliser can't be pulled down between the two parts. So take your pin, rest it on top of your inner frame, push it through and then double it round and back through the stabiliser again. The larger the hoop, the more pins you will use. The file that I'm going to be stitching is uh, the chick number two. This one has got um, a few more steps than the rest so I thought I'd show you how to do this one because if you follow this one then the others will be a breeze. Load chick file two into your machine along with the thread that you're going to use for the sky quilting and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline. Place your batting over the outline and then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure your um, batting and it's also going to give you your placement outlines for your fabrics. Trim away the excess batting from around the stitch line. Place your sky fabric over the top area here and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three. And that's going to secure your fabric and quilt it at the same time. Place your fabric uh, for the grass face down over this stitch line here and tape it in place. Load whichever cut thread colour you want for the quilting of the grass into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number four and that's going to secure this fabric to the hoop. We're now just going to trim up a little bit of this excess fabric and we're going to leave about a quarter of an inch. Flip your grass fabric down and finger press the crease and then you're going to tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to secure this fabric and quilt over the top here. We've now completed the foundation of our uh, pennant. It doesn't matter which one of the, these you're doing in the set they will all start like this the same. The only time it will differ is when we stitch the chick or if you're stitching the Easter egg. You have an option uh, to use mylar with this. 
if you want to use mylar you put lay it down at the same time as your uh, fabric for the egg load your thread color for the shadow into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number six I'm using lavender for this Load your thread colour for the chick into your machine. I'm going with yellow. And then you're going to stitch round number seven. And that's going to stitch your placement outlines for both the chick and the shell. Place your fabric for your chick over this middle area here. And tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to secure your fabric. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line. Pop your hoop back into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag around the raw edge. Next you're going to stitch round number 10 and that's going to do the satin stitch on both edges of the chick. Load your thread colour for the beak into your machine. I'm going with orange and then you're going to stitch round number 11. Load your thread colour for the eyes and the birds into your machine. I'm going with black and then you're going to stitch round number 12. Place your fabric for the top part of the egg over the outline. I've got a piece big enough for both pieces so I'm just going to place it over the whole lot and then tape it in place. Load whichever colour you want for the eggshell quilting into your machine. I'm using peach and then you're going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to secure your fabric at the top here and quilt it at the same time. I forgot to mention, I'm very sorry, if you're using mylar, you'd place that down at the same time as your fabric and secure it, and then they would be both stitched at the same time. You're now going to trim up your excess fabric from around the stitch line. And again, if you're using mylar, you trim that up along with it. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number 14. And that's going to zigzag the raw edge of the eggshell. You're now going to stitch round number 15 and that's going to do the satin stitching all the way around the egg. Place your egg fabric over the bottom half of the egg and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 16 to secure it. Trim up the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 17 and that's going to zigzag the raw edge. You're now going to stitch round number 18 and that's the satin stitching and that will go around the border of the eggshell. The following steps will be the same throughout every pennant that you stitch. 
We're now going to add the backing, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline, and then tape it in place. Load a matching bobbin and thread into your machine for the eyelets, and then you're going to stitch round number 19, and that's going to secure your backing and give you your eyelet placements. We're now going to trim away all the excess fabric from around the edge of our pennant and from the centre of the eyelets, both back and front. So turn your hoop over. Take your stitch on picker, seam ripper, whatever you like to call it. I know there's a lot of names for these. And you're going to make a little hole in the centre of the eyelets, taking care not to cut any of your stabiliser. And if you take it slowly, you can actually feel that you've got just the fabric. So push it through and then just make a little tiny slip, just enough to get your scissors into there. And then you're going to trim out the centre of the eyelets. It's important to keep these the stabiliser intact because you're going to have satin stitching going around the edges of these. Um, and if you haven't got any stabiliser to support it, it's not going to work. So we're now going to do exactly the same on the front. We've got a fabric that frays uh, a lot. You can trim the edge of the uh, pennant later. Just take out the centre of your uh, eyelets for now. Time you're going to remove not only the fabric but the batting as well. Again, leaving your stabiliser intact. get as much as possible out because if you don't when you've done the satin stitching you're going to have um, stabilizer poking through your satin stitch and that's not very pretty I'm now going to trim up around the edge of the pennant itself. I'm going to stitch round number 20 and that's going to zigzag the uh, raw edges of your eyelets. If you're happy that there's no fabric threads or batting poking through. You can now stitch round number 21. Load your matching bobbin and thread for the satin stitching around the edge of the pennant and then you're going to stitch round number 22 and that's going to zigzag the raw edges. If you're happy that you've got no fabric or batting poking out the edge of your stitching you can now stitch round number 23 and that's going to complete the satin stitching around the border. You're now going to free your work from the hoop, so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. Take care not to cut your stitch in though. We're now going to take care of all the excess stabiliser. So I've got a, a cotton bud and some warm water. And I'm just going to wipe it over the edge. And 
that's our bunting pennant complete. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget you will find lots of information including a link to this design in the video description below. Music